between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See lights like a peach If you find the sand And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs like the founders of P90X, Atari, many more, and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. This is part of the Prosper Show e-commerce mastery series where top sellers and experts teach you what really works to boost your e-commerce business. They have an amazing conference, some of the top Amazon sellers and industry leaders. Paul will be there, Sarah Labs will be there, many other people will be there. And our sponsor today is Rise25.com, where a small group of six, seven, and eight-figure entrepreneurs come together live and in person every few months to solve their biggest business challenges and leave with lifelong friendships. Check out Rise25.com. I'm very excited. Today we have Paul Johnson. He's co-founder of Seller Labs with Brandon Checkets. You can check out his interview on Inspired Insider also. They make valuable tools, I've used them, for e-commerce sellers including Feedback Genius, Snagshout, Scope, and Quantify. In the past four years, they've grown to more than 40 staff and they develop applications for modern e-commerce businesses. And last year, Seller Labs helped their customers transact over $7 billion on Amazon. Paul, thanks for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. It's, I'm really excited. You know. I want to talk about some software tools and resources you recommend. Obviously, you know, it goes without saying Feedback Genius, Snagshot, Scope, Quantify. Um, before we talk about that, though, you were a professional musician. Yes. From a young yeah. age? I got my first guitar when I was 15. And... Um... Are you going to play, are you gonna play a Prosper show? <laughs> <laughs> if James lets me, I'll bring my Les Paul and... All right. That. Um, no, so yeah, I got my because that's guitar. late to start. No, sixteen. Yeah, it was late. Fifteen. Yeah, I was late. Left-handed. I was terrible. Didn't know how to play anything. Ever. No one wanted to be in my band. Like, was this to get girls? What What, what made you start? I just had a friend that okay. I met like in ninth grade, and he played guitar, and I thought it was really cool. And so then I'll for Christmas one year, my parents were like, "What do you want?" And I was like, "A guitar." And so they gave me a guitar, bought me a left-handed Mexican Strat. And um, I took a few lessons. I was really terrible. I kind of like left my guitar. I got my driver's license like a few months after that, turned 16. My guitar, I kind of, guitar kind of went on the back burner for a little while, put it in um, my trunk, and they got all out of like really bad, like how to take it to a guitar shop when I decided to pull it out to get it fixed, get it, get it set up again. And then I really started playing and, and, my between my you know my junior year i was really like i want to be a musician and everyone was that's like, what you wanted to do yeah but like yeah you're terrible at music why are you <laughs> this is what everyone told me <laughs> and then my year my between my um sophomore and senior year in high school i the summer i just like got a bunch of guitar books sat down and just like really mm. learned how to play guitar i just went to like and i and i took some lessons and um, I started playing classical guitar and on mm. all these different things. And before, and then, but, but I came back to high school, you know, 12th grade, and everyone was like, oh, we want to be in your band now. You're really good at guitar. I was like, I told you. And um, Did you have a band and, then? Yeah, so we had a band. and The Fighting and, Geese? What'd you call <laughs> it? <laughs> yeah. Um, no, um, the band was called Interview. We were, it was. I uh, like that. That's good. Not interview, but interview. That's, oh, gotcha. I'm like that's <laughs> gonna be my new theme song for my my inspired insider. Yeah. So yeah. Um. But but the you know we made money playing, but the real money, like the reason why I can call myself a prof- professional musician, was because I taught um, guitar lessons. So I went back to the place that I took lessons at, and they were like, "Hey, we need a guitar teacher," and I was like, "Cool, I'll do it." And so, like, my dream for the longest time was to literally open up my own guitar shop mm. and teach guitar lessons. That's what I was going to do for the rest of my life. And then I did that. I actually, like... Really? I was in college. Well, when you were started, selling the guitars. I started the Discount Guitar Warehouse, and yeah. then I opened up a retail location, and I taught guitar. So can these that. any of your songs uh, be found on YouTube or anything? I don't think so, for good reason. Um no, like my old band was not that great actually. When I think, you know, like I've on. had some some rappers, like 
they happen to be white rappers, but um, <laughs> I have definitely found them and clipped them on the back of interviews or put them on the post. So I might. Uh, is there a way to scour the internet? Like, what was uh, the band called? I mean, like it was in, in. It was. How do you spell it though? In I N N E R V. But you're not okay. going to find. that. I'm not going to find it. Okay. Okay. No, I do have. Look, some, I have some CDs of like some interview. Stuff. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Um, cool. I love that. Um, so talk about some software tools, resources, what else should people be obviously, you know, checking out seller labs suite. Um, what else should they be checking out that you find valuable for software tools this is for specifically for the Amazon seller? Yeah, it could be Amazon or e-commerce in general. Okay. Um, so, okay. So for sourcing products, um, I haven't used this extensively, but import genius is pretty cool. So import genius, you can like go find, you can put in like a uh, competitor or whatever. And it'll like typically if they haven't obscured stuff too much, you can like actually see the, the, the manufacturer, wow. like the actual factory in China that they get their stuff from. So you can be like, you, know, you can get a lot of information and, and find factories and stuff like that. It's fairly expensive. I think it's like 400 bucks or something like that. I don't mm -hmm. know, but it's pretty cool. Um, let's see some other cool tools. So on the, um, on the, on, on the side of that, I ask cause you probably hear about everything with what you do and from your sellers. Yeah. So another thing on the sourcing side, I'm going to like walk through, yeah, go take, ahead. but like still on sourcing, um, people love this. This isn't necessarily like a, a software that you would buy. It's like, a, it's a website, but it's called Asia inspection. So if you're getting stuff made in um, China or whatever, you can go to Asia Inspection and for like how do you spell bucks. it? Is Asian Inspection? Asia Asia Inspection. Oh, Asia Inspection. Okay. Yeah, you can go there and get a um, order and inspection for like three hundred bucks. Oh, nice. And then you can also get like a lab test and all these different things done on your on on your product. So that's pretty cool software. Um, let's see. Go through. Um, if you're doing multi-channel listing, um, I'm afraid to like enter in, to. And I'm not going to endorse anything, but I think that Cellbrite is a pretty cool. It looks pretty cool. I haven't used it personally, but I mm -hmm. think it seems like if you're trying to sell, they actually have a hookup where you can kind of like hook up your uh, FBA, your FBA inventory. Oh, there's also Joe Lister actually, which is similar. So if you're trying to like expand to other channels, you can look at, you know, some of those things. Celebrate or uh, Joe Lister? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then like if you're just doing orders, obviously Skubana. You've done some stuff with Skubana yeah. before. They're more Chad expensive. rocks the mic at Prosper Show. Yeah. They're more they're more um they're more for like bigger customers, I would say. Yeah. Um, typically. Um Yeah, Skubana is for bigger bigger type customers. Bigger type customers for sure. Um what else? Let's see. So this is something that people probably already know, but just using like Google Keyword Planner and stuff like that is, is always um, useful. And then if you're not using um, accounting software, like everybody should be using QuickBooks Online or maybe Zero. I think uh, we used to use Zero, and then QuickBooks Online got a lot better and yeah. now we use that and we love Why'd it. Why'd you switch? QuickBooks Online, okay, so we could probably have a whole podcast about this. Yeah. Um, so Because this is the, sort of the fundamental stuff. Like I, like, I wouldn't glaze over it, right? Like 80-20 stuff is huge, even though people know it. You know, Google Keyword Planner, QuickBooks Online, that's, that's sort of keeping track of everything. So. Oh, here's another one, Slack. Slack, yeah. Slack. If you have if you have a team, use Slack. I think it's great for, for uh, communication. Yeah, so Zero used to be a nicer user interface. It was made to be online. It was kind of like online first kind of stuff. Like QuickBooks was like really lagging. It was clunky. It wasn't very good. But as soon as you hire a bookkeeper or an accountant, they all want QuickBooks, like every single one. And QuickBooks Online is actually really good now. Yeah. It's actually They've better. They've improved it. Zero. So if you're going like – I know it's tempting to use something simpler like a FreshBooks or a Zero or something like that. But if you're gonna yeah. hire, um, a if you're gonna hire people, a bookkeeper, yeah. then I think QuickBooks is really yeah. the way to go. I like so, QuickBooks Online for a lot of reasons, but one reason is I can talk to a human being. 
Like, can yep. I actually call up and get a customer service person online? Zero. They have no no phone support whatsoever, which sometimes you just want to call someone. Oh, here's a couple other that. softwares I was yeah. thinking. Yeah. You're doing off Amazon email. Um, you would want to do, like, you know, obviously you have your MailChimp. You have your AWeber. Mm-hmm. Um, Get Drip is actually a pretty cool mm. Yeah, they were just purchased by Lead Pages. Yeah, they pages. got purchased by Lead Pages. Yep. Yeah. So we actually use Get Drip for, we used to nice. use HubSpot, which is like really expensive. We'll give Rob Walling a shout out. Or <laughs> yep. <you know>. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I do like Get Drip, actually, if you're doing any type of email marketing. Um, let's see. Eh, yeah, that's pretty good. Any conferences you like outside of, you know, obviously Prosper Show? What other conferences do you like to, to check out? Do you go to MicroConf? No, oh, you don't. Um, okay. the only, so the three conferences that I will consider attending this year, so I'm going to Prosper. Mm-hmm. Um, the other one is Internet Retail, like IRCE. Mm-hmm. Um, and that one, if you're an Amazon seller, you might not get as much value. Mm-hmm. They have an, a pre-conference day, um, which is, uh, they have a workshop for Amazon. It's, it's okay. But I like going there to see like the trends in the e-commerce industry, yeah. and then they have like probably the most extensive like vendors. They're huge. It's like what like seven or eight hundred exhibitors or something. Yeah, I think that's like a really good place to go to get your finger on the pulse of everything. Like if you're yeah. if you're a small if you're a small seller and you're bootstrapping, like don't waste your money going to IRCE. Like it's not worth it. But if you have the cash. And you want to learn a lot, it's a good place to go. Yeah. Um, another good conference to go to, I'll plug ours. I don't know when we're going to do it, but we did a we, we did our first conference last year. It's called Resonate. Where was uh, it? It was in Atlanta. Okay. Um, it was small. It's a good we name. Don't, you guys don't... are good at naming things. <laughs> we spend a lot of time thinking about it, probably too much. Um, and Why yeah. Atlanta? Well, well, just we're, because you're local? Or? Yeah, we just did it. We're in okay. Athens, and that's like yeah. we didn't have to fly anybody in. You know, It was like a... a it was funny, like we charged three hundred dollars for the conference, but we like we did. We're not, I, I should say we're not going to do this next year, but we actually provided. We did like an escape the room event. What is that? And it's like this crazy game where like everyone like gets into teams, and there's like a bomb you have to defuse and do all this That's fun cool. stuff. So we did that. It was like an unconference. Jeff did it all. Um, what do you mean by unconference? Like, like there you know, weren't you really go, speakers. You go to like, we had speakers, but like there was no sponsors. It was really intimate. We made we made everybody verify. Um, so we only our goal was to only invite people that were either doing a million dollars or more on Amazon or trending towards right. that. Um, we're gonna open it up this year to other people. We're gonna have probably tracks, and we might. When do, do you like usually a, have it, or when did you? When are you gonna have it? I think we're gonna do it in May. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure. We haven't even picked a location yet. We might not do it in Atlanta. Yeah. Um, but that one, it's just a different type of conference. Like right. we go to, a, we used to go to a lot of conferences, and so we know you've narrowed it, or at least narrowed, you personally have narrowed it. it. It's nice for us. I mean, we so we took everybody to Brazilian barbecue. I mean, we're, like I said, we're, we might not do it as crazy. Right. The next time, but it will be a good. I want to use a bomb. Well, it was cool. Well, we'll do. It's going to be different this year, but it was a cool conference. We didn't make money on it, like, but it was fun. Well, you know, you, know, you have um, products that people, you know. Yeah, right. It was a market. Not game. everyone has his products, like a back end of products. Right, you know? and so it was funny though because like people like we asked for feedback, you know, and every, like everyone was like, we loved it. We want to come again. We're like, What's one thing we can do better? And they're like, sell us your stuff more. Hmm. They like didn't like talk about. I wonder if you ask them how, what would they say? I don't know, but they didn't like. We didn't really like talk about our products the whole conference. Yeah. We just invited like yeah all of the experts and yeah. You know, I th- I think uh, I get a sense. You know, it's not like you're jamming down the throat, but I think if it's providing value for people, they want to know how it can help them. You know, like right. I mean, I was obviously interested. Not for you just to plug it, but just to learn, okay, you know, you can, um, this this keyword tool, could you could use it for the sponsored ads. You can use it for your listings. You know what I mean? Right. So there's ways that they can optimize their, their sales. Yeah, I mean, for me, like, 
if we were just trying to make money, I actually would have stopped at Feedback Genius, believe it or not, in the long and because the eighty twenty rule. <laughs> yeah, because like we could have ran Feedback Genius with like three people. And it makes a lot of revenue. Like it really right, does. Right. And and but the idea is that like I want people to win on Amazon. Like I yeah. legitimately love seeing businesses do well. And so I lit- I spend we 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 are an Amazon think tank. Like we literally like sit around thinking about yeah. ways that people can do better on Amazon. And then we come up with an idea and it like has to exist. Right. It's like this needs to exist, and I need to find a way for people to pay for this so it can like fund, fund it, you know. But like, it, right. it, it's like funding, yeah. It it needs to exist. I have to charge for it because it costs me hundreds of thousands of dollars in you know engineering resources for or sure. millions of dollars in engineering resources to build. Yeah. But and like, you want to sustain it. You want to. I want you know, to be around you know, for the long term. Yeah. I want to keep making it better. Paul, this is awesome. So people should check out sellerlabs.com. I could talk to you all day. I know you have something in like 11 minutes. Um, What's one trend or idea you can give away that someone's not executing on? Oh, that's a good question. Let's see. Okay, so I was talking to Jeff about this this morning. Um, I keep mentioning Jeff. We should bring him on the next one. Um, uh, So... I'll talk about product research actually that yeah. I think people are, I, I think people look at Amazon kind of myopic, myopically like that. So you'll, you'll come in and you'll be like, I want to look at, I want to sell a product on Amazon or I want to improve my product. And so you go to your product and you look at your product and you look at it in a vacuum and you say like, I have a water bottle and you look at like your water bottle or you look at like one competitor or something like that. Right. And like, if you really want to, if you really want to understand what you need to do on Amazon, you need to look at the entire category, the entire subcategory on Amazon, like aggregate all of that data into one place and then understand like where that entire category is moving. So for example, let's say that you want to source a product and, and you decide that, um, this isn't really a trend, it's more of a strategy, but I'm going with it. Yeah, go with uh, it, yeah. Um, but uh, anyway, you, you decide that you want to, you, 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 you stumble across a, I don't know, some, some trending thing, a, a tool, a, a wrench or something like that. And you say, okay, this wrench sells for 30 bucks, and I know I can source this thing for $5 from China. And it only has 50 reviews, and it's selling a lot, and it's really good. Well, that's great, but what you pro- what you might not have realized is like that wrench had like some special brand name on there or something like that that was like dr- commanding that high price. And if you actually looked at like the entire subcategory of Amazon, or if you look at like the keywords that are driving sales for that product, yeah. people are using know- one piece of data and extrapolating it when it's maybe not not meant to be extrapolated. Right. So you need to look at like a holistic approach. And I guess yeah. so. The trend is that people are not using data enough, right? I think that they need to, they need to get a complete picture of the problem, um, whether it's researching your competition or looking at your own business. And I think that it's difficult to do. It's, it's like not an easy thing. And so educate yourself on how to do that and whatever tools are out there, like whether it's ours or somebody else's, like use that information to make your business better because you don't want to get a, you don't, I've seen a lot of people really shoot themselves in the foot, like from the beginning, like they go and they find a product and they think, Oh man, this one product sells so well, I'm going to sell it. They spend $10,000 ordering inventory in and they didn't realize that like they're never even going to, they don't even have the margin to like dictate it because they didn't look at the rest of the field on what they're doing. They didn't realize that they, they were looking at this one data point at fourteen ninety nine average sales price when really the market commands a nine ninety nine sales price and they're gonna lose money if they try to sell at that price. Right. And so, you know, I think, you know, leveraging the the new technologies that are coming out that are like really imploring data is gonna be important. I think Amazon's gonna get more competitive, but I think that if you if you use the information wisely, there's still lots of money to be made. Yeah. Paul, thank you so much. Everyone should check out sellerlabs.com. 
I want to be the first one. Thank you. We'll see you at Prosper Show. Yeah, thanks for having me. See you then. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand. <laughs>